Hello and welcome back. And this is another video to follow up on my previous video on how to install a dedicated server. So I'm going to start here in their blog post. Um, this tutorial will be to how to install a dedicated server if you do not have the game installed on the same machine. My last tutorial went over how to install it on the, on the same machine as your, your game install, but there is a way to install it and if you don't have the uh, game at all. So in this situation, what they say in this blog post, and I'll link it, I'll link it in the description below, it, it says you need to use Steam command for installation with the Steam IDs below. So for American Truck Simulator, we're going to need this dedicated server ID. But first, we need to install Steam command. And I'll leave the link to this as well. Uh, Steam command is a client that allows you to download mostly used for downloading dedicated servers for different games if you're if you don't have a steam account or own the game so what we want to do is steam steam command is available for windows and linux so for right for uh right now i'm going to install it on windows show you the windows install the linux installs a little bit harder but it still works well uh, so we'll go over the windows install first um, so I'm currently logged into an AWS Windows instance that I just ran started up on on the EC2 service. Uh, it's, it just has one gigabyte of RAM. It's the smallest uh, T2 micro Windows instance you can get. Uh, it, the server will run on this, but you might want to consider if you want to use a Windows server, consider getting maybe four gigabytes of RAM. Instead, just because with one gig, uh, the inter the user interface in Windows is pretty is a little bit slow. But let's install this on Windows, and all we have to do is to follow the instructions here. We create a folder for it, download it, and extract the contents to of the to the folder. But we can just download this zip file and extract it, and inside the zip file is just steam command.exe so if you just extract this extract all it'll go to you just want to put it in the root of the c drive steam command so that'll create a folder as well at the same time so here we have our folder with steam command and all we have to do is run it and it will install itself so we're just going to go and run this. From the command prompt, so let's open a command prompt, go to the Steam, Steam command folder, and then just do colon, uh, dot backslash steam command dot exe. And it'll update itself. and complete the install so it's pretty fast on an AWS server because it's got fast internet okay so it's finished and Steam Command is now running. So we can go to the next step, which would be to, if you go here, to downloading an app, All right? So you can, okay, we, we need to download an app. So what we wanna do is create an install directory for the ATS dedicated server and I just, for ease of use, I just put it in here in, in the Steam command folder, which is called ATS. You can put it in anywhere you want. And what we're going to do is we're going to force install here. And it says for Windows use backslashes. So current directory ATS. And then we log in anonymous.
So you can log into Steam anonymously. And then we just need to issue the app update command and the app ID. So for the app ID, we, this is where this comes in. We copy this and paste it in using a right click. And we just do that and it should download the server. This can take a little bit, a little bit, because it's 400 megabytes. Okay, fully installed. Okay, so let me check, because I did this one time and it didn't install anything. But yes, check that make sure all of the files are there. You've got the server readme, which gives you some instructions on, and they've just updated this to just point to this website. It used to be like a whole file, but now they've got a whole wiki page here that tells you how to do it. So I haven't actually read this, but but yes, they they updated their instructions. So what we want to do is is run the server that we just downloaded, but. Um, we run it first, it's going to fail, but it will create a directory in your documents folder. So what we want to do is just go in here and run it. So exit out of Steam, go to ATS, the bin directory, win x80, x64, and then just go am trucks. Now it's, there's no config files, it's going to fail, but it will create the Uh, the American Truck Simulator folder. Okay, the server package is file not found. That's fine. We expected that. And then when we go to our documents folder, you're going to see the American Truck Simulator. This is where we need to put our, our config. So what I did was I downloaded or I copied and pasted what you can do from a Windows box through remote desktop is copy and paste your these three files from your American Truck Simulator uh, documents folder in and then copy them and you can paste them in here and then you and then when you have this folder created you just copy them and paste them in here and you can replace the server config uh, with your previous config and then uh, this one I have pre-updated to say T2 Windows uh, I think the max is 8 you can set a password if you want. Uh, these are the ports that it needs, 27, 15, and 16. These need, usually need to be port forwarded, but on AWS server, it actually works without any opening up of any ports. The only port I have open on this, on this server is the remote desktop port. So it seems, I believe it's going to work without actually, so now, without actually opening any ports. But um, so am trucks.exe, we run it again now that we've put in our config. So you need the server packages SII from your, from your local install, I guess. And the server packages dot that um, as well. Otherwise it won't work. So, and this SII, it depends on what mods you have installed on your local machine. So if you don't, if you want a vanilla server, you just have to, you have to uh, remove all your or deactivate all your mods before you export the server packages and export server packages was covered in my last video so you can take a look at that and it will show you how to export these uh, so then take these three files and put them in your American Truck Simulator on the server and it should work if you just run this and there are ways you can tell it and as long as you get to this login anonymous, login anonymous, it's going to work. So usually it will work. Let's see. Let's see how this goes. And when it gets to state running, player zero, then it's running. So now we can actually go into the game. And what we want to do is copy the session ID. You can search by either the session ID 
or the name. So you want to give it a, a, a name that's unique, right? So that your server is easy to find. But I, I'm just, I'm just going to search it by the session. So now I'm going to go into the game and see if I can find the server. So now that we're in the game, we can go to Convoys and search for our session number. Just paste that in. We have to wait till the fetching sessions is done before we do a search. So once that's loaded, we just press enter, search for your session ID. And there it is, my T2 Windows ATS server running on AWS. Uh, there's no mods, it's vanilla. And we're just going to say join convoy. And we are in the convoy and we, ha we have uh, been up to a moderator because I put my Steam ID in the config as I showed in the last video. So this, you know, this is, uh, we'll show you and that I'm a moderator there as well. And it is working now. So the other thing is you might get a problem when you go into drive mode. Uh, if, if you haven't loaded the, the game yet, like if you, it still takes time to load into the 3D part of the game, uh, it may disconnect you from the convoy. So in that case, once the game is fully loaded and you're into the drive mode or whatever of the game, then come back out, go rejoin the convoy, and you'll be fine. So that's it for the Windows install. Um, next, I'm going to show you how to install it on Linux, on an Ubuntu, Ubuntu Linux uh, box that I have on AWS as, as well. So let's do that now. So, all right, so Linux, if we come back to the same Steam Command page, what we need to do to install Steam Command in Linux, and this is Ubuntu that I'm doing it in, is we want to add a user called Steam using these two commands, user add and password, set a password. Um, there's also a step missing here. So what we want to also do is to make it able to run SU commands as the Steam user. So to do that, what we want to do, so we go sudo user add dash m steam. I already have that user already. I've set up that user already. So. What we want to do, and what we want to do is to add them to the sudo group as well, because you'll need a sudo. You'll need it. It will need to um, run its administrator commands as the Steam um, user. Now it says you you need this separate account named Steam because you don't want it to be the root user because it's a security risk. So. Um, that's what we, so we want to create a Steam user. So to add a user to the sudo ability, what, the easiest thing to do would be to uh, use uh, or give it access to the sudo group. So basically you want it to sudo user mind and then sudo and then the, the name of the account you want to give it to. So this allows the account to be a, to use the sudo command. So that's done. And then we can now proceed with the next step, which is to log, go to into the sudo dash u steam dash s. Right, and then cd home steam. And then here, we would do sudo apt install steam command. I already have this installed on this server, but there's no harm in running it. That's why you need the sudo because it's it needs to install the Steam command. So that once that's installed, you you they say to if you're using a 64-bit machine, you'll need to add multiverse. So and otherwise it won't know what Steam command is. So actually you have to do this first, add the apt repository multiverse, sudo apt install software properties common, just follow these commands, and then you can install steam command, because this is a 64-bit machine on uh, Ubuntu machine on AWS. It's a T2 micro, it's the uh, free tier, so you can run this on a free tier. So once that's installed, 
it's very similar to what uh, we did with the windows. So then we, we can then run the steam command and it, um, there was one other thing you needed to do which is to link the steam command executable to user game steam command because that's where it goes to it installs it to there so there's this ln-s user game steam command home steam steam command that that you need to do so do the sudo command to create us a, 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 an executable or a, a, a symbolic link and then you can run steam command and it will update itself just as Windows did. This one's already up to date. So, so to run Steam command, just go dot slash Steam command. And then we want to do the force install dear. I just created an ATS one in the home folder. So that will point it to that. And then we can log on anonymous, just like we did with Windows. And then app update. So we have our uh, the app ID, and the other thing is with this uh, um, with these servers is it, Steam Command does not keep these apps up to date. So you're going to have to come in here on a regular basis and update, do an app update to make sure you're up to date with the latest version. So it'll update itself. Uh, it was just updated yesterday, and I created the server like two days ago, I think. So this is going to update. So you need you should be on the latest version to, to do an update. Okay, now we can exit the Steam command and go into the ATS folder. So it's got a server launch.sh in here. Um, we can take a look at that. No such... Oh, I spelled it wrong. Okay, so all that does is that's the Mac version. So don't don't run that. So what we want to do is to go into the bin directory, go to Linux x x64, and here's the AM trucks server. There's another server launch.sh here. This is the one you want to run, not the other one. So this one here will do it do it properly. So server launch.sh. Make sure that it has a, a, the X on it so that it can actually execute. So what we want to do is do the server launch, and that will that will create the. Now mine is working because I had already placed the full the files where they're supposed to be, but in the first it will fail the first time. So let's assume that failed the first time because it can't find the server packages. So if you go to the dot local directory cd slash your home dot local directory. This is the equivalent to the documents folder that Windows has, but in the share directory, there's an American Truck Simulator folder that you would just CD into there. And you can see in here, this is where those three files need to go, the config, the packages, and the packages.data and the SIA, so the server config in here. So um, the easiest way of getting these files into one of these Linux boxes that you can only usually get into by PuTTY is to use WinSCP. So I'm just going to launch WinSCP. And WinSCP Win allows you to log in. So through, it's basically an SSH login. So what you can do is log in this way. And you have to update the IP address to the current IP address and set your key pair you need a key pair as well to log in and that and so basically once you log in you go to ubuntu and you want to go to you basically want to create a folder this is the main user not the steam user so you, if you log in you could log in as the steam user let's do a new session i think you can do this we'll see Try this. No, I'm just going to refuse it. So you can't log in as a Steam user because it's set up differently. 
But I have it set for Ubuntu to have the key pair. So I created a directory called shared that has everyone has access to. So basically just put it in here, copy your server files over from Windows into here and go back into, uh, into here and come out of the Steam user go into your shared folder and edit your conf server config here and then you basically change, change your lobby name uh, and whatever you want and put in your moderator list if it's not already set up okay so as the Ubuntu user once you've copied these into share what you want to do is create or copy these into the slash TMP so let's copy this to slash TMP and then you go into slash TMP now because you know the reason for this is because slash TMP by default everyone every user has access to it it's got full permissions so if you go into slash TMP you can see your files there so server config and packages so what you want to do now is sudo into your Steam user, go to its home directory, and then go into dot local share. And you you may or may it may not be the um, dot local. Depending on the version of Linux, it might be a different path to the folder. But once you're in here, you can do a cp slash temp slash server star dot star to this folder and it'll copy the three fo three files over and then and then you just edit your server config and change it to whatever you want I'm going to change this to Ubuntu so I know it's the actual Ubuntu server that we're looking at in when we run the server. So once the config is in place, then you can go back and into your ATS folder. You can set up a batch file to get to this later, but bin Linux x64 and then server launch.sh. And if it's working, then it's you should you'll get your search ID. And so the thing with the port, opening the ports, and if in PuTTY, if you want to copy something, you just select it and right click. It'll copy it to your clipboard, and it will come. It'll paste it down there, but it's not going to just remove that. It'll be in your clipboard. And then if I go into Notepad, I can paste it in here. And have it, and then I'll be able to paste it into the game. Um, so the only thing with with the ports is you don't have to open up any ports, but your server won't be browsable. It won't show up on the browse list, but it will be searchable by the search ID. So if you want your server to be browsable, then you have to open up these two ports right here to the outside world and let and 27, 15, and 16 to the outside world and then it will uh, it, it will show up on the browser otherwise if, if you just wanted a private a pro, sort of a private multiplayer server that only people with this code search ID can access then you can just give whoever you want access to the server just give them the search ID and then they can uh, get to it from there. So let's go back into the game and see if we can find the server. Okay, so let's search for the convoy Wait till this fetching is done We can paste in our session ID Paste in your session ID, hit enter and hopefully we'll be able to find it and there it is, the Ubuntu ATS server. So if I join it, it 
should be on the server as a moderator. Yep. And over here, it'll show up as moderator. You can set the time of the server by the set time command. 3 a.m. You can set it to whatever you want. Um, only moderators can do that. But so now, if I go back to the server and see what it looks like there, it should show that you connect it. So back in the Linux server, it shows me as connected right here. Connected client ID equals 10. Now when I disconnect by leave session, and then because I'm the last one to leave, it'll, it'll shut down the, the whole convoy session. And then we'll go back to the server. It'll say it disconnected. So there, so there we have, there we have it. So, and this state running will probably update every so often, showing how many players are on. So, but um, that's it to create a to um, create a multiplayer server without having the game installed on both Windows, Windows and Linux. It works. It works fine. And. So basically, you can do it with the free tier servers on AWS if you want. You might want to, if you have problems with the server crashing or I'm not sure how, how it will perform with eight players connected, but uh, you can try it and then you may want to uh, bump it up, go up to the next level up server if you need to. But so far, it looks like it works on the tier, free tier servers anyway. So. So to, the best way to install Steam command on Linux, instead of trying to follow the directions in here, because it's kind of, could have some problems, I'm not sure. I had a problem of doing, trying this myself, but what I did was I found this page here, and I'll leave a link down below to Sky, Sky Silk Cloud Services. They have an article on how to install and use Steam command on Ubuntu Linux. So. It's very easy to follow. You just follow the instructions and it works perfectly. So this is all the commands you need. Although you do need to add, do the add to add to the sudo group to, for Steam, the Steam username to be, uh, or the Steam user to be, to be uh, able to sudo, but that's the only problem with it. But this, this works perfectly. Uh, just add that one extra step and use this article to help you install Steam Command. That's it for this one. Like, subscribe, comment down below, and we'll see you in the next one.